Alright, alright, alright. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another race, uh, another sprint race from Gazelle Motorsport. Today, we are at the Red Bull Ring. Um, drivers have just had their briefing. Uh, qualifying has just started right now. Uh, again, loads of drivers. 31 drivers today. Uh, it will be a close pack, I hope. Uh, some good battles, just like last race and the races before. Um, the weather is pretty decent. It's uh, it's a bit overcast, but uh, the track is at its fastest right now. It's optimum. It's 18 degrees, so the drivers will be looking forward to being at their fastest, especially right now during qualifying. We are currently looking at Tinus Botha, who I think was off track first. We'll be looking to set his lap time. The first of the bunch. We have some quick drivers again today. We have Justin de Jong driving today with us. Last race he came P3. Uh, we have Luke Wilson currently in the pits driving the Lexus again last race he won I believe and of course many other drivers uh, some of our own Gazelle drivers of course some usuals from uh, from the other races so let's wait and see uh, what kind of times everybody will be driving as we'll be looking with uh, Julian Sorel, who actually was uh, on track first. Drivers have been practicing the hour before this, trying to get their pressures right and um, hoping to, uh, to get the setup as optimum as possible for them. They can uh, drive qualifying without any um, any hic excuse me any hiccups. So we see the first times being set right now. The 29 marks, 29-0 by Boda. Now Justin the Young coming in with a 27-7. Let's see if he can beat that. It's quite a quick time, but I know there are some drivers here which uh, which could definitely get under that. more times flush in you see quite a difference between cars and manufacturers in track of course the usuals of BMWs uh, we see some Porsches around which you can hear of course a beautiful sound uh, um, we also have here are the likes of George Stevens again, sticking close to his 991.2 Porsche. Uh, we have some Lexus drivers, like already mentioned before, Luke Wilson, with Tony Shoulders, also in the Lexus. We have one Lamborghini, Kevin Doolan, one of our own drivers. see some Aston Martins of uh, Florian Engels who just finished his lap goes back into the pits 
Uh, we have some Ferraris, Yuri Pucerna, uh, and also Allard Wolf and Casper Duvalois, both in the 488 Evo. They've been practicing all week, and, uh, both hoping to uh, impress the field in their uh, older generation cars. Of course, as usual, we have some McLarens. Currently, the top, uh, the fastest McLaren is Jesse van Driel, uh, the 28.9, as current fastest lap time. Uh, looking to improve, of course, as do all other drivers. Speaking of improvements, we have. Oh, I just improved. Uh, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Here. James Van Dam is currently on a 9 tenth improvement, which would put him nearly three positions higher. The field is quite far spread out, especially near the 20th position mark. But looking around the 7th to uh, 16th position is all within 7 tenths. if you didn't get to race in this race because either you were too late to sign up or wasn't able to join in general but if you want to drive with us next race make sure to sign up on the sim grid uh, the circuit is still yet to be decided so once everything is finalized and put up on the sim grid you'll be the first to know to put it out on our social medias the likes of Instagram uh, our own discord server of course and uh, make sure to follow us on the sim grid as well so you'll be one of the first to know right now Allard Wolf one of the 488 evos I'm curious what kind of lap time he'll, be, he'll put down Position the 28.2. I think he can go faster than that, but he'll has have to get into uh, into a bit of qualifying. Uh, any other drivers currently on big improvements? Not really. Everybody's either in the pits, just on an outlap, or uh, not really improving. As we see, Luke Wilson, just two and a half tenths. There's Delta, diving into one of the final corners. Quite a high speed tricky corner, especially if you have an understeery car. It's easy to, uh, to get track limits there. We see him improve it into a 28-0, which puts him into P3. Well done. Uh, we see Tim van Wijk on an improvement, also in a Porsche. Quite vibrant colors. Looks like uh, nice livery. As we see on many of these race cars, vibrant colors, loud, many sponsors. Uh, all 
also diving into the final corner here. Hoping not to lose too much time as it's quite a difficult corner to get right on Porsche. But does gain on his time and puts his car into P9. Further um, back down the grid we see uh, Kevin who's on an invalid but is improving. Casper uh, de Valois who is a tenth down on his time. Does lose quite a lot of time on exit here. is on an outlap hoping to improve on their time in these final four minutes of qualifying sector in throughout the whole lap. Does drive an invalid. That's unfortunate for him. See the top of the BMW drivers uh, of Marvin Reisenhauer. He's currently equal on his lap time, but is close to P3, less than a tenth in the case position. The same with Allard Wolf and Chris Harsh, it's only five thousands in between of them. Both on a 28.2. quite close to each other. Less than a tenth separating both the BMW drivers. But unfortunately for Rob Hoves does go off track which means he'll have to start his lap all over again. Oliver Shakespeare on an improvement of Toga Racing Team. Make sure to check them out as well. They have an endurance championship coming up. So if you're interested in long drives and endurance races, check out those guys as well. Thomas Behrman is one of the few drivers still yet to set a lap time. He's currently on an invalid, so I'll be hoping to get some free air here and uh, get a lap time in otherwise it'll be a tough race for him. The same goes for uh, for Hansi Meiberg. But he is on a valid lap and uh, does set a lap time here, which put him up to P24. So we see Schauke Vervat is in the pits. Still no laps for him. He'll decide to start from the back. And I think that's qualifying for most drivers. Done. So Mike Troost on an improvement. Same with uh, Glenn Finema, who's also on an improvement. 
improvement which could gain him quite a few positions if he keeps this delta which he unfortunately doesn't quite but still an improvement which gains him just one position unfortunately for him Jesse van Driel who is on a valid lap same goes for him if he keeps this improvement he could gain quite a few spots um, Hansi Nieburg on an 8 tenth improvement but does go in invalid unfortunately for him so we go back to Jesse van Driel let's see if he could manage to keep a hold of his improvement it does look like he's losing some time Does have did have a good run out of the final corners and goes up into P14. Well done for him. As that finalizes qualifying, we'll go through the whole grid once everybody's lined up on the starting grid in a moment. But currently, Justin de Jong on pole position. Well done, a gap of three tenths um, over Tristan Sleutel in the Porsche. Right, lining up on the grid, we'll go through each and every driver. Alright, we have Justin de Jong in P1 with Tristan Sleutel in P2, Luke Wilson in the Lexus in P3. We're we'll looking forward to what he can do with his car. Uh, we have Reisenhauer, P4, Allard Wolf, P5, Chris Haars, P6, we have Pieters, uh, Hoofs in P7 and 8. Then Van Wijk and Duvalois, P9 and 10, Botha and Troost, P11 and 12, Buterna and Van Driel, 13, 14. Then we have Pryor and Sampieri, P6, uh, 15, 16, Hayden Sweet, P17, Sorel, P18. Finema P19, Engels P20, then we have J van Dam P21, Duland P22, then we have Shakespeare in P23, then we'll be looking at uh, Shoulders in P24, Miburg in P25, uh, Taylor in P26 with Eli in P27. Uh, Stevens in the 991.2, very impressive that he managed to keep this car uh, still driving throughout all those four races. Four races in uh, P28, you know, if Van der Woerd in P29, Van der Walt in P30, uh, Berman in P31, and rounding out the grid, we have Vervat in P32. So, uh, drivers have had the time to set the pressures correctly, put on their good setup for the race, uh, set the fuel correctly. Uh, for the race we have one pit stop, uh, which they are free to do whenever they want. Um, and they can decide whatever they want to do, if they want to do a tire change or... Uh, just do a splash and dash for fuel. As they're now off for the warm up lap. So we 
see all these beautiful cars now going slowly warming up their tires brakes uh, getting their pressures correctly which will be all important for the start of the race tough track to, uh, to overtake uh, especially into the second and third sector both quite high speed uh, and also tight corners uh, hard to drive side by side um, especially if you both don't want to lose time to the cars either in front or behind starting from the pits maybe he forgot to press drive at the start of the race but maybe he can fight his way back to the front but uh let's just wait and see what he managed to do from the pit lane now the drivers are lining up double file And it's green flag, they're off. We see Justin with a good start compared to the Porsche of Tristan Sleutel. The Lexus of Wilson also has quite a good start. As we'll see at the back if everything goes cleanly, which it does look like it goes cleanly apart from the two or three cars. As we see Wilson gaining a position on Tristan Sleutel and Reisenhauer going defensive to alert wolf did gain quite a few uh, quite some time on the Porsche of Tristan Sleutel which does look like he had a bad start as we see Hayden Sweet up into P13 with uh, the McLaren Dulan gaining a position on Van der Waal. It's quite close. Ooh, and that's a big crash between Van der Waal and Dulan. Let's check in the replay really quick. He tried to get up in the inside, but just the gap just closed in front of him, unfortunately for him. Let's see if he can continue the race. Doesn't have too much damage uh, as it looks like right now. Currently the grid is uh, spreading apart just a tiny bit. Just in the young gaining uh, some time on the, the guys behind. The gap of 1.5 seconds. You see the Aston Martin of Fryer attacking Mike Trost for a spot in the top 10. He's around the outside, maybe looking for a switchback move. Doesn't manage to pull it off, unfortunately for him. Let's see 
Shakespeare and Stevens going side by side into turn three. Still side by side going into turn four. ahead however Stevens does manage to break up into the apex next to Stevens however Shakespeare does stay ahead of Stevens let's look to Sorel and Pryor and Jenna behind as well they're within a second behind him maybe hoping to uh, to get a good run out of turn one better than uh, the Mercedes, Mercedes on Sorel Prior now on the back of Stevens uh, sorry Prior now on the back of Trost we need to get a better run as last lap, as, as we see Chris Mars and Olaf will switch positions. Let's see the overtake of Chris Mars. Pulling out a gap of two and a half seconds nearly. It set the fastest level of the race previous lap, 27.9. Uh, Luke Wilson and you, Tristan Sleutel are battling. Tristan Sleutel will be looking to get the position back, which he lost at the start. Uh, Reisenhauer has Chris Harsh on his tail. Only four tenths. Jesse van Driel in the pits, Kevin Duland in the pits, both hoping to uh, get an early pit stop, get back into some free air. So far, apart from a small incident at the start, it looks pretty clean. This would be an interesting battle to, uh, to see unfold from the race. Chris Harsh and Oliver Wolf both on similar pace. Uh, Reisenauer looks to be uh, similar to them as well. Uh, however, Chris Harsh was about four tenths faster the previous lap. Maybe Reisenauer made a small mistake. Especially in those corners where the car already is quite unstable, it would be tricky to follow that close behind. Diving down the inside, does manage to get alongside the exit, hoping to get a good run into turn four. Drag racing onto the exit, does look like Reisenauer managed to get in front. Let's see who can break the latest out of the two. It does look like Reisenauer breaks a little bit later, stays ahead, but does get on the gravel trap, which means Chris Haars gets in front of them. Now uh, hoping to gain some time on him and uh, catch along to Tristan Sleutel who is currently on 3 tenths behind uh, Luke Wilson they've been following each other closely all race now so we see 
Eisenhower now on the same gap as Chris Harz was to him previous lap. does have to look behind as well to both Allard Wolf and Rob Hoofs. This could turn out to be a pretty interesting battle between the four of these guys. Four P4 as well. Well, uh, Mike Trost and uh, Stuart Pryor both have been in this gap uh, for the entire start of the race. So uh, Stuart Pryor hoping to uh, to get a move on, to get past Trost and uh, take advantage of the free air in front of Mike. Eisenhower and Harsh uh, pretty close to each other now within a tenth of each other. As our leader Justin de Jong sets a new fastest lap time of a 27.7, going back to Eisenhower and Chris Harsh. A gap of three tenths. Now Stuart Pryor and Mike Trost side by side going into turn one. Uh, Stuart Pryor breaks a tiny bit earlier hoping to get a good run but still has to look in his mirror to Pucerna. Who is now following close behind as well. Does get a slightly worse run as looks Stuart Pryor now hoping to get a good run out of turn three. Mike Trost looks like he goes a little bit deep but managed to get a good exit. Now Shakespeare and Van Damme going side by side with the third three. Van Damme tries to go for the switchback, but Shakespeare had a good run to, uh, to stay ahead. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Justin is currently still leading, uh, pulling a gap of nearly 5 seconds. So, impressive performance. Better than uh, last year as we see a new follower. Thank you. Well done they RP. Reisenauer and Chris Harsh. That's a move from Reisenauer. Nearly sends it into the inside. Uh, does get a worse run now, so Allard Wolf may look up into the inside of the four. Fortunately for him, the acceleration of the 488 Evo is not good enough to uh, catch it on the side. By far the closest battle as we see Steven and Shakespeare now battling for position. Shakespeare is getting a move on. Uh, now already up into P17, however, Steven is making it difficult for him. And does manage to. Oh, there's a slight bit of contact, not too bad uh, for both of them. Luckily, they can continue both. Tim van Wijk is close to uh, Jamé van Dam. Behind that we have Casper de Valois, also in the 488. And uh, Florian Engels uh, getting past uh, Tony Shoulders in the Lexus. Tony Shoulders who has, I believe, some Pierre behind him. Uh, we already made a pit stop, I think. Let's check. 
yes she has um, now looking back to Reisenhower and Chris are still within a tenth of each other Around the outside, Chris Hart's defending into the inside. Reisenauer does break a little bit later. Chris Hart's going deep. Let's see if he can keep it around the outside. Which would turn into the inside in the next corner. And he does manage to keep it. And gains the position as well. The Allard Wolf looking at the rear end of Chris Hart instead of the BMW of Reisenauer. Head to Luke Wilson and Tristan Sleutel, still within two or three tenths of each other, uh, matching lap times. But Tristan Sleutel has a good run out of the final corner, hoping to get a good run as well out of turn one. However, that Lexus is pretty fast in a straight line, and the Porsche is less fast, unfortunately, for Tristan. Jamais van Dam and Diep van Wijk. Diep van Wijk got past Diep there. Diep van Wijk looking at the inside. He does send it around the inside. But just backs out. Side by side going into turn 3. It's often confused with turn 2 actually, but the turn before the kink in the straight is actually counted as a corner as well. As we see, Tuvan is getting past on the outside of his own bike. Um, taking advantage of the battling between the uh, portion of the body ahead. Which does cost him quite a few, quite some time as we see Reisenauer made a mistake. He's now losing a lot of positions. I think he spun it. Battle for P4 is uh, between still four drivers as Peters has now found the uh, has now closed the gap. This is pretty cool to watch, all between two tenths of each other. As they are all Gazelle drivers, so they know they can trust on each other's racing, on each other's lines. Going onto the main straight. Chris Harsh leading the train. Alert Wolf close behind. He's got a little bit wide. Closing into these guys. Around 
about a tenth, maybe two tenths faster. So in about a lap or two, he'll be uh, he'll be on the back of these guys as well. See Casper getting past uh, Jean van Dam. Replay seems glitched, so unfortunately can't really use them. Oh, I'm just two times behind Chris, but it does go wide, which would probably cost him a track limit. Which you can only have three, unfortunately. And then you'll be sent into the pit lanes with a drive through Pit lane, we see prior into the pits, making his first pit stop for the Walt 28 going into the pits as well. Uh, the leading driver right now is prior with his pit stop. However, it's still stationary. Uh, Craig Taylor is the net leader of pitted drivers. rest will be looking to either pit as late as possible or as early as possible right now to get into free air. Some slides are still three tenths behind Luke Wilson. A little bit wide out of the final corner. Uh, Tristan Slatel does look like he had a good run. He can send it up the inside of turn one. Going into the pit lane, making his pit stop. As I just said before, we'll be hoping to get into free air so he can get into his rhythm, drive good pace, and uh, maybe get an undercut on Chris Haars. Now, uh, Justin de Jong still in P1, with a gap of 7 seconds already. Pretty impressive from him. Behind him Luke Wilson with uh, Tristan Sleutel following close behind. Behind that Chris Harsh who uh, does have some free air in front of him. Around 8 seconds. And uh, close behind both BMWs of Rob Hoofs and uh, Max Peters. Finema hunting some positions. Uh, it's already up into P13, looking to get into P12. Uh, attacking Walter van der Woerd. Tries to send it around the outside with late braking, but unfortunately for him, can't manage to hang it around. Maybe into this corner sends it, but it is quite a difficult position, uh, difficult corner to overtake. So dangerous to, uh, to do some unexpected moves there. So you see Casper Duvalois now looking to gain a position on Stevens. He's three tenths behind. Sorel and Vinema getting past each other. I think Van der Woerd made a mistake. Did Sorel gain a position on both Vinema and Van der Woerd? You see. Mike Troost and Hayden sweep both into the pit lane at the same time. Uh, Shakespeare following them as well. So both Toga drivers into the pits, maybe some team strategies there. Uh, still looking to this battle, they've been... Uh, it's like a little bit of lag from Tristan. They've been following each other pretty much this close all race now. Uh, nearly 25 minutes. They'll be sweating like a <laughs> like a son of a gun. Uh, Wilson trying to uh, to extend the gap. However, Tristan Sleutel trying to overtake him, of course. Now we see Luke Wilson defending. 
will compromise his run into, uh, into the third turn. Christian Sledel has a good run, he's already alongside him. However, the Lexus is so fast in the straight line, does manage to pull ahead. If the Porsche can get alongside it during the brakes, no he can't. Kinema goes into the pit lane. They are exchanging positions, however. Sovel stays ahead due to pitting, of course. Uh, same with Florian Engels, Fletchwein racing into the pit lane as well. It's nearly the halfway mark, so some drivers hoping to, uh, to pit a little early, maybe get, a, get some free air get an undercut on the drivers in front of them. So now we see Peters has lost the position to, uh, to Bota, but it's two times behind him. Thirty-two drivers in this race. Uh, none have decided to, uh, to end the race and uh, go into the pit lane. So see Peters looking up the inside of Bova. However, managed to stick it. Still going at it between them. They have a McLaren in front of them. Uh, flags. He's rushing to the pit lane now. It'd be interesting to see where he ends up uh, compared to uh, to Allard Wolf. Uh, Allard Wolf is currently into turn four, which would mean that if Chris does take a tire change, which by the looks of it is mandatory. Uh, looks like it will be close between them. This Allard Wolf with number 73 is going into the final corners. Where he ends up. Chris Hars is now driving out of the pits. I think Allard Wolf is ahead of him. Oh, it's close on exit. I think Chris Hars will edge it just. However, the exit of Allard Wolf is better than that of the pit exit, Chris Hars. Maybe one of them had either a really good pit stop or rather a less pit stop. To, uh, to save a little bit of tires towards the end of the race. 
or maybe just push it now, um, take your pit stop and uh, and then push ahead. Going side by side, where Tristan maybe finally for him gets in front. Still side by side, going into the final corners. Where Luke Wilson has the advantage, meaning the car or the corner will turn into the inside. It does go a little bit defensive into the final corner. Maybe Tristan Slater can get a good run and try to send it up the inside. However, Luke Wilson still defending the inside. Tristan Slotel doesn't manage to get alongside, but does have a switchback, has a pretty good run on Luke Wilson, is alongside. However, the Lexus is so fast in a straight line. We're still side by side into the braking zone, the Porsche has really good brakes. They leave each other loads of space. Good to see. Uh, Luke Wilson just edges ahead of him. So back to the drawing board for uh, for Tristan Sleutel. Let's see uh, where he can uh, make his move now. Hoping to, uh, to force him into a mistake of course. Wouter van der Woerd also closely battling the entire race. Both still yet to make a pit stop. Um, and the leaders of the pit stops are Chris Harsh and Donald Wolf. Both had similar pit stop times. See the leaders already in the pits right now. Justin de Jong in the pits. Tristan Sleutel following closely, maybe getting an undercut on Wilson. Uh, Rob Hoos following them as well. So we have a new leader right now, Luke Wilson. With uh, Peters, the gap of uh, around 30 12 seconds behind. Uh, Reisenauer behind him in uh, 2 seconds. Furthermore, the gap is uh, pretty big to Casper uh, to Divalois. It's be interesting as well to see where Chris Hars and Allen Wolf end up comparing to, uh, to Rob Hoofs. Still stationary, so Chris Hars and Allen Wolf both will be getting out in front of, uh, of Rob Hoofs. Cut for uh, for Chris has worked a treat for him. Gained quite a quite some time on uh, both his competitors. Uh, so by that logic, Peter should be ending up behind them as well once he makes his pit stop. Justin De Jong has Walter van der Woerd behind him. It is for position, however, Justin has already made his pit stop. Wilson and Peters in the pits. So it'll be interesting for Wilson to see if he ends up behind or in front of uh, Sleutel. Sleutel does have traffic in front of him, which could cost him some time. I think it has. Is Luke Wilson already driving? He's just driving now. I think it will be. He'll be coming out in front of them, in front of uh, Tristan. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be 
close now. He's in f Tristan on edges is in front actually. Oh, good undercut. Whoever does have Luke Wilson behind now, as they've been matching pace, it'll be interesting to, uh, to see if Luke Wilson can uh, can attack Tristan Slater. Past the halfway mark, we see Reisenhower now in the pits. Uh, we'll be going through some of the drivers. We see Van der Walt uh, in last place, unfortunately for him. Has already made his pit stop, same with San Pieri. Uh, 30th place. Uh, we see uh, Florian Engels, 29th. We see uh, Ben Eli. Thomas Berman, American flag. Uh, P27, Craig Taylor started from the pits, is now P26. Uh, has already made his pit stop as well. Hans Jumeiberg, uh, P25, uh, has also made his pit stop. Uh, Tony Shoulders in the Lexus, hashtag Lexus Elite on the side. Uh, P23, Jamey van Dam. BMW P22, Tim van Wijk P21, uh, George Stevens P20, as we see Jesse van Driel in P19, Glenn Finema and Casper Dupelois battling for P17, uh, Julian Sorel in P16 with Shakespeare ahead in P15, both McLaren's with Mike Troost and Hayden Sweet uh, battling for P13, we see ahead of them. Uh, Jiri Pacerna, P12, Stuart Pryor in the Aston Martin in P11. Now in the top 10 we have Reisenauer P10, uh, did fall back from P4 into P10 unfortunately for him. She ahead of him Peters, uh, did lose quite some time to Botha in front, uh, maybe due to the late pit stop to Peters. Ahead of, uh, ahead of him, Rob Hoofs. Did lose time to uh, the guys in front, Chris Hars and Art Wolf. Both of them in P5 and P6, respectively. Uh, Luke Wilson, close behind to Tristan Sleutel. Paul Bouten van der Woord, who was in P2, now is the final driver to make his pit stop. Uh, and then in P1, with a gap of around seconds I think. Uh, Justin de Jong. Looks like he's cruising. These guys are still battling. It's, uh, it's impressive how, uh, how these guys have managed to keep this up for the entirety of the race. The same with Chris Hars and uh, Alan Wolf behind them, however, that gap is slightly bigger. But Chris Hars is closing in on these guys in front. The gap is now under 2 seconds, where it was 8 seconds, so uh, they close it marginally. see Mike Troos and Hayden Sweet both that as well. Old Gen and New Gen, with, uh, George Stevens and uh, Tim van Wijk also battling. Very beautiful flat six noises. Just go wide a little bit between 
might could get a good run onto him into turn 3, close to each other. Both similar speed, they're both riding the same car. Mike does send it into the inside, Hayden looks for a switchback which just managed to pull it off due to some oversteer. Mike defending into turn 4. Hayden tries to pull it around the outside but does have a drive through. Maybe due to track limits into turn 1. Oh, that's unfortunate. Still the battle of the Porsches. Tim van Mike looking to get past George Stevens. Have a good run. Breaks it to the inside. Stevens tries to switch back. Tim van Mike parks it on the apex. Still, George Stevens gets on the outside. Both Porsche both have good brakes. Stevens hangs it around the outside, which will turn into the inside for the next corner turn. And does manage to keep the position. Yes, he does. Uh, Tim van Mike has to also look into his mirrors for uh, Jamais van Dam. He's close as well, following. gain a position due to Van der Woerd his pit stop, so now up into P9. Last corner now into the final corner. Run. Did set a personal best last lap. And is now losing quite some time behind Peters. Inside forces Reisenau around the outside. Let's see who's the best late breakers. Looks like it's Peters. However, Reisenauer does try a switchback. Peters still defending the inside. Reisenauer around the outside. Let's see if he can break a little bit later. Hang it around. No, he can't. Peters hangs it. Uh, stays in front. Still in the lead, quite comfortably in still around 20 seconds. It's
short. Luke Wilson and Tristan Sleutel. You see, Luke Wilson has lost um, uh, the, the car of Tristan Sleutel a little bit. The gap is now nearly three seconds. Which does mean Tristan Sleutel had the pace the entire race and uh, the early pit stop did help him gain the position. Uh, maybe just didn't have the pace to, to uh, get, uh, get the overtake done on pace. So smart move to uh, take the earlier pit stop and uh, get the pace advantage on, uh, on Luke Wilson with the earlier pit stop. Same goes for Kins Haars. Did an earlier pit stop, uh, about a lap or two, and uh, during that got into free air and uh, gained time on the uh, other move. It's now ahead by about uh, one and a half seconds. Uh, see the most P6, six seconds behind these guys. All drivers right now managing their pace, I guess, uh, hoping to not get any warnings in the, the final 15 minutes. One wor warning here or there, they could uh, be okay with, however, too many, of course, we'll send them to a try to as we see with the McLaren of Hayden as well. Still in P17, so. Uh, what would have happened without the, the drive through would have been in uh, into the top 10 actually the field right now is pretty much apart all over the place you see some drivers Closest gap right now. Three one and a half seconds of, uh, from the wood. Half seconds behind uh, Van Driel. Good start to P2 at the, the beginning of the race. Now has to look into his mirrors, maybe close to losing uh, his podium place, podium position to, to his harsh. So we see a Lexus of Tony's shoulders who spun it into turn 3. Thank you all for joining in for this race, of course. 
if you want to participate next race make sure to sign up on the sim grid um, it's yet to be announced which circuit we'll be driving on but if you want to be the first to know make sure to follow our socials follow us on the sim grid uh, follow us on instagram youtube twitch and uh, you guys will be the first to know of course uh, it'll be on the sa <coughs> same time next week and we're also looking to host a sprint championship on the Sundays. So if you're interested on that, join our Discord. Uh, and you will hear everything about it once it's finalized. Manage his gap, uh, manage his tires, and uh, tries to keep him at around a second for the rest of the race. Justin de Jong leading our, our entire pack, uh, has been leading the entire race as well. Uh, you can quite easily say he's been dominating. Uh, maintain his gap of 15 seconds in the lead. The fastest lap is around 5 tenths faster than the guys behind. Um, speaking of the guy behind, Tristan Sleutel, uh, the gap is, uh, like I said, 15 seconds is fastest lap. Looking to manage uh, his second place podium, he'll be happy with that as he knows Justin is quite a bit faster than him. Uh, however, they are really matching lap times for this final part of the race. As Justin, I think, has been driving a little bit inconsistent. Final half. Luke Wilson and Chris Horton. Still battling now for the final podium position. Quite a bit before. I think he did 
didn't partake in the same one, but he did partake in one other races. Closely behind the wall, for an angle so he does have a drive through right now. So he'll be heading into the pit lane, I think, to serve his penalty, which he does. Pretty impressive pace from him. Uh, I think he qualified around P15, I believe. So uh, maintain a clean race, and uh, I think he can be proud of himself with the uh, result he uh, is currently taking home. If he can keep the car in a straight line, of course. Eisenhower is closing in on uh, Botha in front. Looking to uh, undo his spin earlier in the race. Keep in mind that he has a car in his mirrors close as well of, uh, of Schalke Vervat. did not qualify uh, and is now P23. So he didn't gain as many positions as we've hoped to see this.
good run, gain about three tenths already. Where the Porsche brakes are just too strong. Heading up into that corner, Lexus Elite. Well, rather Lexus not so elite on the brakes. So we see Glenn Finema into the pit lane. Not quite sure why. I guess uh, he didn't have enough fuel. Right, as we've now entered the final couple of seconds, if we have a lot of lap, close. close enough so this will be the finish as we see Justin de Jong in P1 finishing the race pretty much dominated the entire race with uh, Tristan Sleutel in behind uh, in P2 I'll be happy we, uh, he regained his P2 Luke Wilson in P3 with Chris Harris following closely behind Six tenths in P4. Then Art Wolf for the Carmelite Racing Team in P5. Rob Hoofs. Reisenauer pretty close to him actually. P6 and 7. You see both on P8. Peters in P9. And then Stuart Pryor now going through the final corners. Who rounds out the top 10. Cherna into the pit lane, maybe he didn't have enough fuel as well, I think he does cross the line, maybe it did it cost him? No, he finished. It was close, we would have cost him a position to uh, Mike Troost, who finishes in P12. The performance by him, Shakespeare in P13 and Chorel in P14. With Berman the last to cross the finish line in P12. Five. Well done to all our drivers. Well done to uh, to Justin Wilson and Tristan Sleutel um, for uh, for the podium positions and of course Justin for the over uh, for the overall win. And thanks to you guys for watching the stream. Um, like, subscribe, follow. Um, and if you want to participate in the next race, make sure to follow us on the SimGrid as well. So thank you all for watching and uh, see you all next